after you have enabled your payments accounts in QuickBooks Online, you'll be able to add the ability for customers to pay you via credit card, bank account, Venmo, PayPal, all sorts of different ways that they can pay you. Now, I'm logged into QuickBooks Online, and I'm going to click on the gear menu on the top right hand, and then I'm going to go into account settings. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on payments on the payments tab on the left hand side. And I'm just going to confirm that I do have a merchant ID. That means my account is enabled to take electronic payments. It tells you here how long it would take to get a credit card payment or a bank transfer. It's got information about your company down here where it says chart of accounts. You can click on that and you can choose which is going to be the default bank account in which those customer payments are going to be deposited into through that merchant account. And then also the processing fees, which is going to be your chart of accounts, bank fee or transaction fees that you're going to be using for it to record the fee, the little percentage that QuickBooks uh, takes from allowing you to take an electronic payment. So we're going to click on save. And now we're going to go into where it says sales and we're going to select some of the options. So down here where it says invoice payments, I can click on what's the default setting for every new invoice. So every time I create a new invoice, it will automatically allow you to accept a credit card, Apple Pay, ACH, PayPal. I could turn off any of these if I want to, and you can always turn them on one by one on each individual invoice, but this is the overall settings. Now here are the payment instructions. You can type here whatever you want. That's the default payment instructions that every new invoice will get. I'm gonna click on save. The other settings that are worth looking at is here where it says messages. So this is the invoice a subject, um, if you if you e email an invoice, the actual subject line, here's the default text. If you wanna CC a particular email, you wanna CC or BCC every one of those uh, emails that would be useful as well. You can click on email me a copy, sort of almost the same thing as asking for a, a CC or a BCC. And then down here it says uh, reminders. You can actually choose how what type of reminders you wanna give to your customers after you send them an invoice if they haven't paid you. So three days before the due date, due date, after the due date, that sort of thing. And here it says online delivery. Typically pick um, show short form in the email and attach an email and PDF. And then additional email options, you can pick any of the options you want here. You kind of have to try every one of them and see what they look like. So I'm gonna click on done and then all my settings are set up. So now I'm ready to send um, an invoice. So let's go to the new button on the left hand side and then click on invoice. Then I'm going to pick the customer I want to invoice to so I can pick any of my customers or create a new customer. Let's create a new customer just for the test of it. And we do test customer. Now you can put the email here um, of your customer, whatever email address they have. You can put uh, their address. You can put internal notes, specifically with payments. You can put um, whether your customer has a particular payment method. Let's say the customer told you always going to pay you via credit card, American Express, whatever, the default terms. So you can change them invoice by invoice, the default terms. If you want to set up a credit limit for this customer, so let's say they have $50,000 credit limit, they can't have invoices past that amount. And then um, the delivery option settings, I usually put it under um, use company default. And then you can look at all the other settings. They don't affect the payments uh, portion per se, but these are all the things that you can set up in a customer by customer level. So I'm gonna click on save, and now my customer is set up. Now we're automatically creating an invoice for this customer with net terms, 30 days. And again, I can click on CC, BCC, and individually set these up if I didn't set them up in the default settings. Now I'm gonna scroll down, I'm gonna pick the products and services I'm gonna sell to this particular customer. So let's say I'm gonna sell them one of these and one of these. And I have completed separate videos that talk about how to create products and services and how to map them to your chart of accounts. We're just making the assumption that at this point, you do have something on the product and services ready uh, to invoice. Then down here where it says customer payment options, I can click on edit and I can specifically choose if for this particular invoice, I want them to be able to pay via credit card or bank transfer or PayPal. I could turn them off if I want to. Okay, so it's really up to, up, up to you. What do you want to do there? Um, here's the default uh, text here. So it says, please pay electronically. Um, you know, whatever you want to put there, you can change on the fly. There's a couple of additional boxes for notes. 
that you can uh, play with those. You can also add an attachment. Here on the right hand side where it says customization, uh, we can also pick whether or not we're also going to have a ship to box or an invoice number or an invoice date or a due date or terms or service date, etc. So these are all different things. I can pick and choose whether I want to see that information in the invoice. Up here it says add logo. You can add your company logo up here. Okay, where it says payments options, we kind of talked about that. These are all the different um, ways that you can pay. But here in the bottom, you can choose whether or not you want to see the total in the bottom. You can choose whether or not you want to see that. You can choose whether or not you want to see a deposit field. If you want to record a deposit uh, separate to let the client know, I already have a deposit on this. You can add a discount line. So if you want to discount this, whatever percentage is, and then you can also add little checkbox to add the discount after the sales tax. So are you discounting pre-sales tax or post-sales tax? Then you can add a different box for shipping fee. So if there's any shipping charges or whatever, you can add that in there sort of on the fly. Here it says design. Uh, you can pick different color themes. So if you want a blue or purple or gray or you know whatever color fits your uh, company logo and company colors and also a couple of font style choices. Here it says automation. You can create this as a recurring invoice if you want to. And also here's the default settings for the reminders that we talked about earlier in the settings. And then lastly on the bottom, there's a quick shortcut to open customer related reports. If you already have a history of transactions with a customer and you want to go over those um, reports before you um, create an invoice. Okay, so once you're ready and your invoice is ready, you click on save, that saves it into the system. Now you have an official invoice number, invoice 1039 in this particular case. I can um, go to print and download and I can essentially create a PDF version of this invoice, um, which I can save into my computer somewhere or I can print. So it's up to me what I want to do with the sort of PDF version of that. I can also now email it. Now before I email it, I'm going to click on email view so you can actually see what it's going to look like. So when your customer receives uh, the email, it will look exactly like this. When they click on view details, they'll be able to see the invoice in details and also download the PDF. When you click on PDF view, you get a quick preview of what the PDF file looks like. So you can see it there on PDF view. And then when you have a payer view, that's uh, what the email will look like with all the payment options. So right now we haven't turned on any of the payment options, but as I turn on payment options, for example, I turn on PayPal, notice it, they will have a pay now with PayPal, but if I turn on bank transfer, they're going to have the ability to enter their bank information. If I put credit card, now they have the ability to put debit, credit card, bank information, and PayPal. So they have all sorts of options to make um, the payment um, uh, once your customer gets uh, the invoice. So now, once you're done creating the invoice and previewing what it's going to look like and you approve, you're, you're thinking, this is perfect. This is exactly what I want it to look like. We're going to click on review and send here at the bottom. On the next screen, it's going to pre-fill that uh, default subject line that we discussed earlier. It's going to show you the, your customer's email, uh, the from email. So it's going to come from a generic QuickBooks email. But you can connect your Gmail account if you actually want to have, um, if you actually want to have your own Gmail account connected to this or um, Google uh, Workspace email. So that's what shows as the, as the default email coming in. And then we have here uh, the default body. Again, you can change that on the fly. You can click here, it says manage online delivery settings. It will take you back into the settings screen we talked about earlier, where you can actually edit what those uh, default messages look like. So it's a really nice little shortcut that takes you back here, just in case you forgot exactly how to get back, back in there. Okay. So once you're done and you change the email body or the subject or whatever it is, then you click on where it says send invoice. And QuickBooks will now give you a notification that your email has been sent and your customer will get a copy of the invoice and they will be able to pay you electronically. So I hope that's helpful and I'll see you in the next one.